Hello YouTube, welcome back. So this week we are going to start a larger project in that we are going to start reproducing the Sutton Who cooking chain. So we're going to start at the top of the chain and create the suspension ring for this first video. But like with a lot of my reproductions, we're going to be working with wrought iron, which is quite a nice material to work with. Now, the sections of wrought iron I have to hand are old paddle rods of about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half diameter. So to start off with, I'm going to forge these down to about an inch by half inch section. Now, I'm doing this under the power hammer because it's an awful lot quicker than walloping it by hand. So, and I've left the surface a bit rough, almost as though I'd been using a Smith and Striker technique. Now I've marked the centre of the bar, and I have marked 30mm either side of the centre of the bar. I'm going to take a good heat in the centre of the bar, and using the rounded face of my turning hammer, in conjunction with the bick, I am going to do a nice rounded double set down. Keep dressing the thickness over the bit as you go along. And with the first one done I will find the mark and do the second double set down. And I'm hammering between the centre mark and the 30mm mark. So with both double set downs exec executed I will dress the apexes like so by just holding the apexes at 45 degrees and coming down on them with the rounded face of the hammer dressing the thickness to keep it at half inch as I go along so with this central part created this will eventually be hot punched in order to provide a fixing hole, but in the meantime I need to draw out the <coughs> arms uh, either side of the apex. I'm doing this with a heavy hammer, it shouldn't take too long. Alternatively you could do it over the bick like so. Um, I could do it over the power hammer. I was quite tempted, but with a good heat the raw tile will move quite quickly. And because this is a historical reproduction, I quite like to do as much of these by hand as I can. So draw out the material, dress the thickness. I'm using the heavy hammer because it has a nice broad face, which allows me to reduce any hammer marks. And I'm not drawing out the entire length of the bar that I forged out, as you can see here. I'm drawing out just what I need and not bothering with the rest. So from the center I will mark up uh, 228 millimeters either side from the center and then using the cutting plate on the anvil I will just lop off the excess. So here is our blank. And we are just going to upset the ends of the bar. And you can see I'm upsetting a bit of an angle onto this. And that's just going to allow me to produce a nice scarf in order to forge weld both sides together. So and I'm upsetting it just to compensate for any wastage which might occur during the welding phase. So sorry about the slightly blurry out of focus. This is a scarf being formed on the sharp end of the anvil. And here is the scarfed piece. The other one is similarly scarfed, uh, but on the opposite side so that when you fold it round, the two will face each other. So at this stage, I have gotten the apexes nice and hot, and I will actually hot punch now, uh, because it's a bit easier to do it at this point rather than when I've welded the arms together into a ring. So I will start off 
and punch halfway through the material, then I will simply flip it over and I will punch through the other half of the material. And as you can see, it met up perfectly and the slug fell out without even needing to go over to the pritchel hole. So at this stage, I got a nice heat into the scarf and I start rolling it over the bick. Now, if you look carefully, you will see that I'm not actually hitting the material where it is directly in contact with the bick of the anvil. And that's because I don't really want to thin it, I just want to move it. So if I were to hit it where it's in contact with the bick, I would just end up forging it out. So uh, if I made batches and batches and batches of these, I would probably make a jig for bending. Um, this is a one-off, so I'm just doing it by eye. And it doesn't really matter if the circle isn't perfect at this stage because we still have to weld it and everything. So all I want to do is get the two scarfs to meet up. So once they're pretty close, I will just get a dull heat in them and just tap them together like so. And just make sure that they line up. So here is the ring ready to be welded. Now this is wrought iron, so you don't need flux. Uh, I will pile up the fire nice and high, just to get a nice big neutral layer that isn't going to burn the material. And I will get the iron to a welding heat and forge weld it. Now you can use flux if you feel the need to use flux. Uh, for wrought iron it's not particularly necessary as long as you know what you're doing with the fire. So first heat I will tack together, second heat I will actually weld from the inside as you can see uh, at a slight angle but then I have a matching angle on the hammer and the angle is purely because I can't quite get in there because it's a closed ring. So third heat, fourth heat to finish welding up. I'm using a light hammer because I don't want to draw out the material too much until I'm ready. So get the weld in there, only hit it where you're welding to start with, otherwise you will thin your material more than you want. Uh, and then once you've welded, then you can start actually dressing to the correct thickness. Uh, at this stage I will start making sure that everything is relatively flat and true and everything is lining up as it should. So here is the ring welded up. Now you can see it's not particularly round. Don't send me hint mail just yet uh, because we're moving on to that now. So as you can see the scarf went in quite nicely. A couple of little marks, I'm not too worried about them now. So I will actually go over to my big ancient anvil and very delicately, using the wide-faced hammer to prevent any marks, I will just start rounding that off. Now ideally you want some nice long heats in this because as you move one section of the material it will want to push into the next section of material. If it's cold you'll just end up with a bunch of sharp corners. So keep a nice long heat on it and you'll end up with a nice smooth circle. Now I'm not aiming for a perfect circle, I just want an even circle that's mirrored on both sides. I'm being very careful not to distort the hot punched hole as well. Uh, I've kept as much heat out of that as possible. Uh, and I'm just literally chasing out any overbends or underbends from the circle to create something that looks about right based on the drawings. So take your time, take a few heats, and here we go. Here is the finished suspension ring. So give that a go if you're going to. Next week we'll move on to the decorative piece that lives underneath. So thanks for watching. Please like or subscribe or leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. Here is my current list of patrons on Patreon who are supporting these videos. Thanks a lot guys. Uh, you make it 
awful lot easier for me to produce them. That's much appreciated. And I will see you all on the next one.